Twilight episode of the Twilight Zone set in this futuristic society where everyone thinks alike and looks alike and ignorance is bliss. And if you're feeling a little down, all you gotta do is drink a cup of instant smile. And at 19, everyone has to choose one of several models to be transformed into. And they even have to wear their name in their uniform because that's the only way you can tell who's who. <laughs> and the story is about this young girl who's about to turn 19 and she doesn't want to be transformed. She's a dreamer and a philosopher and she can't comprehend. <coughs> why can't I just be me? But why would you want to be perfect? Asked the doctor, her mother, her uncle, who looks just like the doctor. <laughs> and they coerce her to conform. When my niece was a little chubby going through puberty, she was encouraged to diet. And my brother asked me, what should I do? I said, just keep telling her that she's always going to be daddy's little girl. And that she's just fine the way she is. And you know what happened? She grew into her body instead of growing into an eating disorder. Diets don't work. Science has proven it. Your metabolism slows down, your immunity is lowered, the pathways in your brain change and you crave more calories and it takes fewer calories to put the pounds back on and two thirds of all of us dieters regain plus more. And then there's a the whole topic of genetics and how child abuse and trauma and how would our grandparents eat are all triggers to those brain pathways. But even with all the scientific evidence and this time of hypersensitive political correctness, perfect strangers still think it's okay to judge and to snub and to shame and make comments and draw conclusions about me based solely upon the shape of my body. If all I was was fat, every little girl deserves to be told that she is just fine the way she is. Every child should be told that. Nobody ever told me that. At most I was told, oh, but you have such a pretty face. So I guess my head was acceptable. <laughs> Maybe that's why I've always been a thinker. I can remember thinking that I was just fine. It was the people around me who seemed determined to convince me otherwise. There was always this underlying message, don't you forget your fat. You don't deserve to have confidence, and if we tell you you're okay, then you'll never lose the weight. But the truth is, how do you grow up when you're being put down? At 13, I was getting straight A's. I loved being outside, riding my bike, playing ball with my friends. I was in the school musical every year. I even started my own magazine called the Tartan Times for the Bay City Rollers. <laughs> Man, I love those guys. But I felt like my teachers, my family, my friends, all thought my every accomplishment was outweighed <laughs> by the numbers on the scale. My aunt, who was just a few years older than me, who I worshiped and adored, she told me that I was never gonna have any friends in high school because I was fat and I can remember hearing my father ask my mother, when is she gonna lose weight? My sister is thin and blonde and has always been told how beautiful she is. And I can remember her coming home for a visit, my mom squeezing her so tightly and saying, oh my gosh, look at how thin you are, and giving me that sideways glance, she said, that's how your sister will look next year. <laughs> and I feel it rise from within me, but why isn't it perfectly clear that I am acceptable, lovable, beautiful, and I cry, mama, oh, mama. I was always dying, so my boyfriends would love me. 
I can remember Johnny took me to this fabulous restaurant for my birthday and the waiter pulled out my chair and the arms were so close and I panicked and flushed and up came my old friend, Shane. And I squeezed myself in that chair and Johnny looked across the table and said, I just wish you could stick to a diet. <laughs> and I feel it rise from within me. But why isn't it perfectly clear that I am acceptable, lovable, beautiful? And I cried, Johnny, oh, Johnny. At 13, I was put on my first official diet, and everyone in our big extended family knew about it. And we saw them every Sunday at my grandparents, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins. The whole house was always full of people, and everybody knew and encouraged me to diet. How much weight did you lose this week? Good girl. And if my mom caught me eating fattening foods, she'd say, I thought you were on a diet, Chubbs. And they even offered me rewards to conform. My grandmother promised me a new wardrobe, and my godfather promised me a beach vacation to California. And I remember. I remember when they all promised me that if I blew out my birthday candles without eating any cake, that my wish would surely come true. So I starved myself so they would continue to love me. And I lost weight, but I never got the rewards. But wasn't I worthy of those things as I was? As I am. But it was out of love. Funny, huh? My shame was built on love. Can you see me? Oh, this is me. At 13, I learned to feel shame and self-loathing when they all looked at me with disappointment when I gained that weight back and even disgust when I gained even more weight because it was my own fault, right? That's, that's when I started apologizing for my size. Before my body had even fully matured, I was already apologizing for not being good enough because I wasn't thin. Take me as I am, don't take me apart. There's no one that I'd rather be than me. No one that I'd rather be than me. Yes, I feel it rise from within me, and suddenly it's perfectly clear that I am acceptable, lovable, beautiful. And I cry, people, oh, people. I'm fat and I'm proud and I'll cry it out loud. And I will never apologize again. No, 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 no. I will.